Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Archidex Online 2020. I hope everyone is staying safe and healthy as the global pandemic is still running wild out there. My name is Sienwe, a Masa representative, and I'll be your moderator for today. Firstly, I would like to thank Archidex 2020 for giving Masa an opportunity to conduct this session. It is our pleasure to have this collaboration with Archidex. Before we begin, I would like to let everyone know that we might have a little delay and lagging on the internet today. But nevertheless, I hope everyone still enjoy the session today. For those who have no clue what Masa is, I hope you can lend me your ear as I explain further. The word Masa stands for Malaysia Architecture Students Alliance, and it is a non-profit student com committee operating directly under Pertubuhan Architect Malaysia, or PEM, consisting of student representatives from all architecture institutes in Malaysia. It is a platform where Malaysian architecture students join forces to learn and share with appreciation of the past, generating sustainable living in the present, and bringing unlimited possibilities to the future. Our mission is to develop an effective platform and network between Malaysia architecture students and professionals. We also serve as liaisons between students and PAM. We represent the voices from architecture students. This is what we are. So for today, we have two special guests proudly present to you the chairman of PAM Education Committee, architect Adrianta Aziz, the, and the one who will be sharing his experience and ideas on a very, very interesting topic that I believe everyone will be looking forward to, the one and only architect Mike Boone. To begin with, let us welcome architect Adrianta Aziz to say a few words. Hello, architect Hi. Adrianta. Hello, how are you? Hi, Zhenwei. I'm fine, I'm fine. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much, Zhenwei, for your introduction. Welcome back, all the students, all the viewers, to the Architects Fast Forward Beyond the Studio. And today is the second series on the 14th of October 2020. Well, featuring the October 2020, the World Architecture Month, I can consider that a truly architect online digital month. Well, um, I just want to say uh, apologies in advance if they say that the, the, the coverage is a bit lagging because my area quite slow and then Hopefully, is everything is going to be smooth. But just in case I'm lagging or missing on action, um, maybe perhaps the MC Zianwei will will support this. Well, okay, dear viewers, dear students, especially. So I hope everybody uh, stay put, relax. I believe that everybody had a dinner already, and just relax. You know, enjoy the show because through Masa and also organized by Architects CIS. Thank you so much in advance. And on behalf of PAM Education Committee and also Acacia uh, Committee Edu Architectural Education, ACAI, I would like to say thank you so much to all the team behind the scenes there to organize our second series today where such a beautiful topic. And then I believe everybody know architect Mike Boone my good friends, my best buddy, and I consider is a, an idol and mentor for all of us, especially for the young architects. Then can you share the background of the video for a while so that I would like to showcase and then read about Mike Boone. Okay, so viewers, students, architect Mike Boone, I can call him as a dancer architect very charming, cheerful, a lot of positive chi. He's graduated from the University of Western Australia in 1989. His firm, architect JFN Syndrome Brahat, has constantly been assessing the architect's role in our society. Architect Mike believes that architects have the responsibility to contribute positively. So when we invite him to give a talk today. I personally call him that he was so happy and pleasure to share his experience to all of you students. But architect Mike said he had no idea <laughs> on how to engage the audience in the virtual room like this. So he thought if he knew what the participants wanted for hear from him, 
the knowledge may help to caption their interests. Hence, the organizer sent out requests to collect all the topics for him to structure his sharing section tonight, and he will be responding to a wide range of personal experiences from his travel, his design, his practice, his clients' relationship, and also his life in general. So my dear students, viewers, sit back, relax with positive mindset, enjoy his sharing session. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop the questions in the comment or chat session on the screen, and we will try our best to answer during the Q&A session at the end of today's talk. Well, are you ready? Without further ado, let's welcome my good friend, architect Mike Boone. Hi, Mike. Hi, thank you, Adrenta, for the introduction. I have to push my nose back a little bit. It's, it's touching oh, no. the screen. <laughs> thank you so much, yeah, architect Mike. Uh, it's a pleasure, it's an honor. And then spending time with us tonight, sharing mm -hmm. your session, especially, you know, we're talking about an idea. I believe everything begins with an idea and also an idea is the salvation by imagination. So without further ado, no idea. I can take my boot. The floor is yours. Thank you. Can we get the screen on? Now, before I start, I think everybody is uh, having a tiring and hard day. Let's do a few minutes of breathing exercise. Follow me. When I say in, you breathe in through your nose. When I say out, you breathe out slowly through your mouth. Lovely. And hopefully that will calm us down. Let's do in. it. Uh, Mike. Here we are, three little mice. When Papa talk, the kids can watch and wait and watch. I used to have 30 over staff or 30 over uh, colleagues in my practice 25 years ago. Now down to three plus uh, one office manager and my part-time ex-girlfriend, now my wife. So uh, hopefully you may hear from them one day or later. So just a bit quick introduction. From the questions that I received, I gathered them into three categories that I'm going to talk about design, practice, and, and give some opinions later on. Now, I start with this quote from Alva Alto. He said that architecture art cannot be created in an office like environment. So I show you how I create architecture not in an office environment from my old house that I built in 1995, 25 years ago. The house is open, flexible, adapt to anything, adapt to any changes, and which is now our office. I moved out, I moved to a new house, so I, I, I use it as an office. And it's a place where we really appreciate and feel the sun, wind, and water. It's an office so it has no air conditioning, and I have to practice what I preach. And these are my kids when they're still young and some students. And uh, the, the taller ones standing are architects now. To begin with, I want to talk about my mentor or architects that I look up and then I learn from them. I'll start with two person. One is Alva Auto. I think most people have heard of him. The other one probably may or may not is Mel Ryushun Su. Alva Auto is a Finnish architect. Ryushun Su is a Korean, South Korean architect. One is East, one is West. So instead of talking about them, I 
I took a pilgrimage and actually go and try to talk to the to the Ava author, not from the grave, but through his building. And then I have the opportunity and lucky enough to spend a lot of time with Mr. Ryu, Ryu Chun Su because he's, he's 74 years old now. So I took a pilgrimage to Alto's building. I'm going to show you just to quickly and say how what I learned or what I gathered from that trip. The, the, the house and studio are very famous. It's the National Act Monument. It's set in a suburb in Helsinki by a lake in this sort of neighborhood. As you walk down the street, the building on the right is his house that he built in 1937. You go around to the back. This is a famous shot that you see many, many years ago, and it still looks exactly the same today. But what intrigues me before going in is details like this. Where West meet East. And actually, if you look carefully and really look at Arthur's work, it these pictures actually says a lot. It's a lot in a reference made to Japanese architecture. I will not elaborate, you can read up. And from there, I realized that architecture is in the details. It's details that make architecture. Then also, I realized how he made architecture by understanding the inherent qualities of materials and how to put them together. And I walk further down, it's just, just not far away, in the same neighborhood, he built his studio uh, in 1955, about 30 years later. If you walk down the side street and look on the walls, you can gather a collage of details. And all these details are very relevant today, and they're still very relevant. And if you go around to the back, and I realize that simplicity can also be theoretical. It is a, like amphitheater design for his landscape and he used it to give talk and lectures and also when you look carefully decoration doesn't have to be loud and it, it just fit in then the next shot i'm going to tell you behind the windows if you sit down you look out the windows is the lights that fill up that space it is so calming and it's so relaxing where he had his studio upstairs and another thing about Otto is about his furniture design. He designed everything. He gone through stack and stack of sketches. And I particularly find his detailing intriguing. And it works on functions and really understand the functions of how everything work and actually put a lot of thinking and make it special and it relates to and make it very convenient for people who use it. For example, a drawer like this that can open up on one end and if you go to the other side of the room I'm, I'm taking this picture from the kitchen if you go to the dining room behind this wall you can open the toilet from the other side so it's toilets are open from both sides and the cabinet walls up there they can open on both sides also it's something very practical right so yeah. that is alpha auto so for so me it, it, it... Yes, so you're talking, you're talking about your mentor now, right? So let's let's talk about your your topic now, your idea, your practice. You know, coming back, your what you learn from them. Uh, you 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 want to get me out of this room so soon? I no. still haven't talked about my friend Ryu Shun Su. <laughs> ah, yes, there's one mentor here. Yeah. Yes, real real is really a guy that I was so privileged to meet. We connect because by chance he was invited by the government to design our indoor stadium in Kuching. Right. So he is the man who failed to be an artist. He always wanted to art, be an artist. He can't get into university. He was depressed. And actually, he went to the mountain, go to the temple to become, he became a monk for two years. And imagine he is an artist, became a monk. And these sketches like this is, is kind of, you know, how, how, how do you understand a Buddhist monk draw naked woman? I think it's all in the mindset. And that, that actually intrigues me. So after he became a monk two years, he decided to do architecture. 
And because of that, because of his religious thinking, he's not religious as religious as Buddhist, but I think it's more on the philosophy. He, he looked, he taught me uh, Buddhism is about philosophy, about life. So that's where I learned a lot about from him about life. So I'll just tell you a story about Korean kite because students are very worried about making changes to the design and making changes to what they already have because they, they always think they're running out of time. When Ryu entered the competition for the World Cup Stadium uh, in 2002, right? He completed his design in the office and he was in the plan to perish to, uh, to give a talk in a conference. But when he was in the plan flying up there, he saw a kite, a Korean traditional kite. Suddenly, he decided to change his design completely. And he sketched the design on the way, in the plan, on the way to Paris. And he won the competition because of that. Right? Then that was built. And if you go back, if I go back, you will notice that he sketched a lot and he works from design to detail, so from A to Z until the building is completed. It's just like Alva Auto. So Alva Auto is west, mid, east, and it really is east, mid, west. It's very thinking, his thinking is very eastern, traditional, but the outcome is very western in a way by understanding technology, understanding material, understanding construction and understanding practicalities, right? So from the indoor stadium, I realized that he's not building a building, but the building functions go beyond the stadium. When World Cup finished, the building actually became a community hub. It's linked to a subway, it appealed to all edges. Uh, all edges, it's got uh, departmental store, it's got uh, function hall, etc., etc. So it is a real place for the local community is very well used. And you only see this in Korea, right? Sun bath with an umbrella on. Mm. Now, then I, what I learned from that is doing less for more. And I was very unfortunate to visit him a few times in Korea. Uh, he brought me to his studio and he mentored me, me what life is about and especially life as an architect. Have fun. And this is a place called Panya. It's a mountain resort. 200, uh, it's a mountain reserve, 200 miles, uh, kilometers away from Seoul. And the story starts from this river where he bought a farmhouse with an owner. He's buried in the round shape uh, tomb in front or behind the house, and that is his friend. He's usually alone with his old friend. And this is the setting where he meticulously sketched out and gave instruction to visitors, whoever visit his house, if he's not around. He kept his key underneath the carpet, uh, uh, the floor mat. That's the house in summer, another view of it. And this is the place. This is where life is all about. The picture says it all. This is in autumn, the first time I went. And the, uh, the next time I went is in summer. And we're already having fun. I mean, who would show two naked body, an old naked body in front in, in, the, in, in the public? That's me. So <laughs> that's real. I have to follow him. Then, and real, this is his studio. He works here. This in the mountain. This is the place of his work and where he rests and where he plays. He, he's, he's fun. He's very cheeky. He's got all sorts of tricks. He's very good with cutters. And and he's very, he's like a child. He's, he's, that's why I learned about his life. And he wrote these four words. You can read for yourself. It says it all. So these are the two person that actually influenced me a lot. But if, I sh if you notice that I show you, they are all small buildings, very well detailed and considered. So it's the sort of architecture that I'm doing. So, so that is about, yeah. So, Mike, it seems that you, you, this is your, your idol, your mentor. You've been inspired for, 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 from their works. And then you went there, you, you experienced it. Okay. So, I believe this is a begin with your creation of your idea. And then, how about the question about, you know, which is the most influence for your works? So, now can you show your, your showcase your works? Because the student might have this problem about, 
I and mean, when talking about detailings, talking about the forms, talking about our functions, they are start to be confused. Is it form full of function, function full of form? You know, can you explain further to, to our viewers tonight? <coughs> yeah, I will be disappointed if the student don't ask question about form and function, function follows form, right? Yeah. So so that that is something that we I think we we, we need to know and understand. It's a basic, it's architecture one zero one, right? But mm -hmm. I think it goes beyond that. I, I would not go into a theoretical uh, discussion in uh, of this, but, yeah. but let me show you how I think. Architecture is more than form and functions. It is it's about culture, it's about like, everything, right? But if we look at practicality, it seems the question asked about form and function. What if we look at how I do a project from what I learned from the, the two mentors by looking at constructions, materials, and structures. But before I do that, to answer the form and function question, I want to show this building. I don't know anybody has seen this before. It's by Italian architect for a, a, a cabin built in 1965 one, when I was one year old. Pay attention to the staggering windows, uh, small windows on the right, yeah? And this is the plan. Very simple plan for a cabin that can fit many people, but you don't see the bedroom. The bedroom is number seven. That is a section of the bedroom. Oh. Right? And that is the picture of the bedroom and not the windows from the outside. I think this picture says it all. Yeah. So, but what I do, I, that's what I spoke about. Form follows structure, materials, and construction. Mm -hmm. Function to me is a given. So this project is a, a showroom for Toyota. If a Toyota has a standard requirement for the showroom, but we challenge the standard and then we want to do something very different. Uh, it, it gone through a lot of resistance, but actually we eventually managed to do something that's totally different. Th these pictures actually captured it very well. Right. I, I mean, I would not explain the picture. This is uh, looking from the river, but I'll explain to you how the form is being derived by, by not thinking about the form. It started from structures. So I designed a structure that's lightweight, minimum weightage on steel, steel caused by wearing it, you know, a ton by how many a thousand uh, ringgits. Yeah. So you want mm -hmm. to do steel structure, you want it as light as possible. So by that, if I can do a curve, a building with a curve, with one truss section, it will be quite interesting. See? So I wrap it with skin, slot it in, and even though the building is kind of have a curve, it's the same truss that's been used. So that ends up with a building like this. But... As I said, I don't think about form, but I think about space and light. And I think about materials, how we put them together. And details are used, um, and, and, and details are actually not kind of, kind of struggling to make it, and it, it just happened. If you look at the top right-hand corner, the collar to the sprinkler head actually is a leftover piping for Acon. You know, Acon pipe will have uh, insulation. So they have a lot of off cut. So I ask them to just cut it, slot it in, they become a collar, it's free. Right? So everything is detailed with a reason. Then I think I think that is just a quick demonstration. I've done building right. by not thinking about material constructions. Yeah. So this is mm -hmm. just an example. So what what's your favorite? The most successful architecture you've been working on? What you are makes asking you so for special? trouble. You're asking for trouble, Ron <laughs> I'm giving yeah. this talk for free, so I want to do my free commercial. So I have to advertise myself a little bit. <laughs> so for any architects, you, you do building. Every building that we do, we are serious about it. So then if you get recognition of what you're doing, I think there's something in the work, right? So I'm going to mm -hmm. show you my award-winning project, but I'm not going to talk about it. You can Google it. Or you can uh, watch my other videos and that they are in there. I, I'm not going to repeat what I've presented before. So yeah. this is my first award in 1998. Yeah, I spent one. two hours sketching this. My partner detailed it up and we won an award. And I, I, the, the prices pay for first class airfare and live in the street in Sri Lanka for my first Acacia event. That's, ever I since see. then, I was kind of tied up with Acacia. 
And, right. and uh, I started doing conservation without knowing anything about conservation. And this is my first attempt as one local international I was. And because of that, that brought me a lot more. Mm. Then, like any architects, you do your own house. So that, it, this house has got a lot of stories, yeah? So I'm, I'm sitting inside of this house at the moment giving you this talk. Oh, and with okay. that house, the details that we develop, I use it to renovate another house. Then I tested the same detail in public buildings and how a police station would look not like a police station. Yeah. Then I also show that architects can plan. So this, this is a planning exercise where it's a kind of a, a, a troubled township where we have to revive it. And now it's thriving. And this one won at work. It came as a big surprise because the planner employed by us as a planner of record submitted this to the planning institute to work with us knowing about it and was not ever knowledge. I learned about it when, when he was interviewed in the newspaper. But I was very proud, you know, because at least architect's planning scheme won the planning at work submitted by a planner. Anyway, right. I'm not going to go more, but, but these two, it took 10 years of my life, these two projects on one side. I think, look into the YouTube, that it's the same YouTube uh, video that you just played, uh, Adianta, uh, yeah. if you're interested. Uh, this is a 20 minutes presentation. And this actually, this presentation helps to bring me to many countries. Uh, I think a lot of people saw me dancing, they expect me to dance in their country to give a talk, but I never. <laughs> But from there, this is what I, we were really doing, uh, spending a lot of time uh, doing this CSR, social engagement work, and on community uh, engagement to promote heritage awareness. Yeah. So also, log into this uh, pub public design lecture series by Pam Sarat Chapter. Mm -hmm. Check the YouTube. And Pam Sarat Chapter has a very good series of talk every Friday, especially this month. Log in. Right now, I think that that is my showing off part, Lawa, a little bit. <laughs> now, a uh, free commercial is over. Let's get to something. Serious. I mean, I mean, I mean, again, yeah, Maya, yeah, because you, for me as an architect as well, when I saw your your all your works, it's been inspiring us, especially all the students, and then I can sense the satisfaction value from your your side, and then you've been talking about your mentor, your ideas before that. You know, you have two mentor, Alto and Chuso. And then you adapt it, and then you provide. You know, you you've been winning a lot of awards and so on. But again, as an architect, you serve for society. You know, can you just share a bit? You know, how you can serve your relationship with your clients, perhaps. You know, how how you can experience a situation with your client if they want to change their mind and working progressively. How, how can you share with us now the situation you you sharing with your works with your clients? You, you asked me to play with fire, Adventa. Yeah, let's just spark it. <laughs> See, uh, you're asking to talk about troubled relationship. I only have troubled relationship with girls. <laughs> but also a troubled relationship with clients. Many, many. I'm a notorious architect. I, as famous. right? Because I, I'm very serious with my work. But I, I, I'd rather not to talk about it in a direct way because I don't like to do kind of uh, characters assassination, which is not fair. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. let me share you with you in a very kind of situation that let you know where you know that it's going to be not good in the outcome and what do I do? But there's a question here. It said, do I ever give up, right? The answer yep. is no. That's why I'm still here. So let, let, let's look at this because I think I have 20 minutes to go, I think. These shop houses in the heritage district was burned down just before Christmas, 10 years ago, 11 years ago. I call it architecture for the record because as the work progressed, I realized that I'm being used because they're not appreciating the work and architecture. They just want to get this thing done because they, uh, they don't know how to get approval and how to reconstruct this thing. So I okay. had to present this personally to the chief minister and get approval for them. And anyway, that is right in the city center. Mm -hmm. I went to duck the record and found the original survey plan. And I overlay uh, the shop house reconstruction plan over it and give them a lot more for space because one of the big cause of this disaster is illegal extension. 
all the shop houses almost cover up all the courtyards. Yeah, when the fire broke, it's very difficult to contain. So mm. I, I prove to them that you still can get the quality of space, retain the courtyard by giving them more spaces that they, what they've lost in the fire. Anyway, having cut the story short, uh, this is what I did. I mean, very straightforward. Um, then there's the outcome. Then to do the elevation for conservationists, I, I don't believe in replica. If you smash a Qing flower jar, you go and stick it up, back on, and put to auction, it's got no value. Right? Mm -hmm. So I was looking hard on the influences of the architecture of shop houses in that area. And this one strikes me. And I think I can, we have a lot to learn from the craftsmen in the old days. These are buildings done with architects. It responds to the environment and the condi weather condition very well. I think as an architect, you can see, right? So how do I contemporarize this? I do not re replicate those shop houses because there are still quite a lot of them around. So it's not necessary. But how do I want to tell a story or show an example of how to approach this, this situation? And that is my tech. I'm presenting a solution by reinterpreting the, reinterpreting the past for the future. Mm. And that's the outcome from the shop houses burned into a big hall and then reconstructing it. Mm. So, so people are interested. So I take them there before the building's being wrecked. So I, I, I did this uh, shop front doors because opposite the shop houses was vegetable market that's demolished. So when I was young, the vegetable markets have a lot of cracks, right? That stacks up timber cracks that stacks up, it kind of reminds me, it kind of recreation of the imagery. So this thing is not about form function anymore, it's about memories, yeah? Then people always speak through, it's interesting, uh, people are curious when they see lubang lubang everywhere, you know? so they pick through, this is what you see from inside, it's a veil, it's, it's, it's not naked, it's, it's, it's sexy, right? <laughs> so the, it's kind of light quality with the restore coach, yeah? Then this is my favorite shot, the courtyard actually has a, a kind of environmental control function. It's got a glass to stop water from coming in. You've got louvers on top to have the sun, to stop the sun from shining on it directly. Mm. And you see the steps stick hanging up from the wall. That one actually reads your, allowed them to read the light to go up to the rooftop. So this is about shadows, place of light. Then what happens if you don't have enough lights? This, this reminds me, you, we appreciate what we have when we lose it. Think about that. Mm. So the whole agenda of doing this is try to convince the public and the shop owners and the government that they should have a back land. And if the building was done so that the back can be cut off, right, and demolish and create a back land, it become a double frontage. So as an architect yeah. doing a project, if you have a choice in a situation like this, you have to take up the role of activists. You have to in kind of consider activism as a social role. A reformer also, a visionary other than just an architect. That's what I, I thought we should be doing. So, wonderful. Do I still have I mean, time? Yeah, you still got the time, but again, after all your talk at the beginning, and then it reflects me that you try to say to all the students here, the ideology is like breathing, you know? You never smell your own uh, task, you know? It's like it's like the beginning session is now you breathe in, breathe out. This is what we call it the ideology. But perhaps um, can you share with us now? Because now we we having this this uh, new normal, the pandemic issue. You know, some of us saying that you know it has been a limitation, challenges. Uh, do you mind that you can share with with me or with all the students here? How do you, how are you facing this MCO this pandemic situation now, Mike? <laughs> This is the <laughs> question that I'll expect also. Hang on, let me right. get my slide back on. Okay. Because as you know that uh, students nowadays, uh, they are, they are st I heard that uh, many university, IPTA, IPTS, they're still studying from home, uh, working from home. I believe only <coughs> final year students have to be physical contact. But we just wonder, maybe perhaps you can share with all the students, uh, what is the challenges from our side as an architect during COVID-19 pandemic and how you overcome your challenge? 
I, I'm not going to talk about the pandemic and problem of pandemic, how it affects architects, because they're all over social media, everywhere people talk about it. So, so everybody have their own problems, right? Right. But, but I think situation like this, especially during economic now downturns, when the economy is in trouble, it's op- always an opportunity for me. This is my third time after I graduated to go through kind of economic situation caused by various reasons. Yeah. So I think during the pandemic, uh, MCO period is my best time in my uh, architecture career. Wow. And it, 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 it gave me time to really sit down and to calm down and think. And I can afford to do nothing, but I get bored after three days. I thought I can relax and do nothing. I get really bored after three days. So I've gone through two sketchbook. And I, I work with my son, David, uh, at home a lot. And we spend clock and more hours than we normally do in the office. Mm-hmm. We have no projects. So what we do, we dream up things uh, from what I've shown you. Uh, I, I, we, we try to say, okay, if there is a situation now, since we don't have any job, uh, why don't we do something that maybe one day it'll be useful to people who likes, who, who may find it useful. So we continue to do what I know best, right? That's to design things, to dream up things. So one of the things is to look at how to do the cheapest, possibly flexible, lightweight, affordable modular houses. A lot of people try to do this, attempt this, right? It come with all sorts of effect. But we, we, we put this in the open source. Actually, we, we have friends who are actually using it uh, to improve the social housing they're doing now, right? But we are not architect. We just give them this, uh, give them the idea. It's fine. So this is good for the people. So we actually took the standard components that you can buy off the shelf and, and really look at the dimension and lay it out and say, how can we do a mean... Uh, a building that is as near zero waste as possible. So there's no waste edges. So we model it in 3D. And the outcome is a third year student design. No offense. Or maybe first year nowadays with the quality of the student doing it. But it has a lot of virtue in it. The flexibility, the, the compactness. And it's very, very light. It's less. Than, it's about 14 ton. The whole building is a 14, 15 ton. That means if I go to some P area, I can do it without tiling. Right, so it is mm. rethinking about how to build, but not thinking about form and uh, uh, architecture, but just thinking about what you can contribute and give to people. Just, mm. just a different way of doing things. And with that, when we run, when, after we finished it, one only took us a few days, right? So we thought, what if we do this to our beach house? We every architect, I mean, I, mean, I thought every architect would like to have a beach house in uh, a day in their life, right? So we, we, we wanted to do a beach house. So we, we used the same idea to do a very simple beach house. So basically, it's just two trusses. And this beach, and you know, beach house is not uh, an area that is easily accessible. So you have to think about transportation. There's limitation with a, 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 a truck that you can bring materials, right? So, you, so it challenges us to think about transportation, that how it influences uh, modular housing. A modular construction and so we did this put two trusts very simply on the existing ground put a fork up quickly and light wet frame structure and crack it over with a grill as a, a kind of security grill on the bottom as uh to, to close it in a semi enclosed space and this is what we get <laughs> and from inside it's just very simple material that we can get off the shelf and again, light and shadow is always something that I, I enjoy. It's always a recurring theme. And after light wet, we get bored because after a few more days, we've got nothing else to do. It's three months, you know, bruh. Mm. So we thought, what if we use container? People got crazy about container. So we, we, we get to know people that who can help us, tell us about the problem of building a container. So also we experimented with containers. What if we, what happened if we make it two stories? What happened if we have more fun and you know? Then we have a series of container beach houses. Actually we have 14 series, uh, 14 versions. I'm not gonna show them all. Mm. But eventually we managed to build one. And this one is a CSR project. And we, we actually gave this to the lawyer, uh, local council. The guy at the bottom middle, guy with a uh, black white is the mayor. 
and he bought the idea and then funded it. And then the mural was designed by an uh, intern at that time, Esther Wong from Palace. And mm. it's, it's uh, you know, a community work. And we have uh, JCI come in to do the painting. So it's kind of nice. It's been put up outside of the primary school. Now I think they're going to use this as a prototype for all the bus stops, uh, other bus stops, for free school buses that the state government will provide. So, so we're creating things for ourselves, but no money. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's so that's how I spend my MCO, other than eating, sleeping. Right, right, right. Wonderful. <laughs> but I, I heard that your, your son, David, and, and one of my uh, graduate architects, and uh, now she, she's already a professional architect, have done one uh, CSR work, if I'm not mistaken. And perhaps that I will inform uh, President of MASA, uh, Ms. Howie, to invite them for their the next MASA online talk. Yeah, perhaps to do that. So, wonderful. Ah, I mean, okay. yeah, um, architect Mike. Uh, this is what we call it. The in architecture, the the idea is degenerated. Uh, design allows a more direct and pleasurable route. This is what I can I, I can foresee that. I know yourself. You you as a, a truly charming, happy, positive mindset. But I know you are very serious of your work. You're very strict, but uh, for the for the students, I think tonight you have learned something here, and perhaps what's your opinion? Uh, the next opinion about what is the best advice, uh, especially for the the fresh architectural graduates? Mike, <laughs> this is the question, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I don't know what to give, but I tell you what. I would like to do what I, at that time I wanted to do when I first graduated. I was a poor student when I was in Australia, when the university organized a study tour to Europe, I don't have money mm -hmm. to go. I have to work in a restaurant during holiday to pay for my fee the next term. At that time, mm -hmm. we still can afford to pay because the fee is not that high. Mm -hmm. So my dream after I graduated was to backpack in Europe. <clears throat> To travel and I want to go high island hoppings in Italy and Greece mm -hmm. to sketch and to take pictures and to date the beautiful young Italian or Greek woman have red wine cheese olive and freshly made bread mm -hmm. until mm -hmm. I get sick of it and my ex-girlfriend my wife sitting next to me I'm going to get my ear pulled very long to back tonight but anyway that's true and it never realized. Mm -hmm. uh, for by by situation, I had to come back, and then I never left. As I, I was with this company ever since. So mm -hmm. <clears throat> and until about ten years ago, I decided to say to 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 look at after I, I spent so much time with Rio to look at life in a different way. So I started to travel, and as I travel, I realized that I can do better work. And I learned a lot more. Travel is not just to go and uh, uh, enjoy food and uh, show off on Instagram. I don't have Instagram account. I don't have Facebook account. I don't have all those, right? I only use WhatsApp because I've got no choice, right? Yeah. But, but absorbing is like a sponge. Now, mm. when I come back, I still don't have no idea what I need to do. But when I'm desperate, I would kind of recall my travel. It's always an answer in there some way, somehow, right? So, so I only have one piece of advice because... You cannot advise people. Everybody has their needs and wants and situations right. are different. But always think about this. How can you always, how can you make a difference and make other people's life better? And other people are happy, you are happy. But it's no fun to work with me because I score people all the time, including my client. <laughs> but that's me. <clears throat> all right. All right. That's so, you. So, so I'm not going to show you more. I think we should take some questions. Since you 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 propose to invite uh, David and and Su Hui, they are here with me actually. Maybe they yeah. have some quick advice. Yeah, just before, a quick one before. Yeah, and then uh, the the next project I want to show actually is just it's another MCO project, but it, it took three years, and then during MCO, it just happened the timing is right. We, mm -hmm. we get it done. We just handle it, you know. But I'm not right. I'm not going to show it today. Mm -hmm, Let them mm -hmm. show it to you in the session, right? So okay. maybe, uh, uh, do you want to talk to them? Uh, I'm not sure. Is it, is it okay with them? 
Oh yeah, sure. Uh, who do you yeah. want first, the boy or the girl? Uh, both of them, maybe side uh, by both side. Of them. Yeah, uh, both okay, of them. Maybe so, I would just unplug, a quick one. I, okay, uh, I will unplug the uh, my earphone so that they can speak through the phone. Come on. Maybe Mike, you can bring you bring us around to your house because I've been to your house before, and then maybe we can, you know. Ah, yeah. Uh, Hi. Let, let you talk to them first. Okay. To them. Hi, Gaga. Yes, just a quick one, Gaga, and also David. Yeah, because it's a very interesting uh, that what you have done, and I read through under the Pam Sarawak chapter also, and under your 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 society works. So perhaps that can you share with just a very precise explanation from your just a teaser for all the students here. Explain about the 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 project that you have done. Is it okay? Sure. Sure. <laughs> sure. But, hey, um, it came out from an opportunity in our observation throughout the right. NCO. Our right. response, thinking of how what are our responsibilities and what we can to contribute to the society. So it's um, a very simple installation at a park in Kuching. So yeah. for the details, we'll leave it to the next time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I think that's a teaser from 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 both of you because um, I truly wanted to uh, call up for your your masa online the next one because um, for me I always believe architecture is about you know helping society that what both of you have done contribute to society I think is good for students to explore and know more about your progress perhaps David maybe you just a very precise explanation what make you working on this project. During MCO, after MCO, what what made you feel now, as a as a fresh graduates architects, you know, young architects? Because I have to say that uh, all the viewers, you know, the students are they are young architects, they are future architects. So what? How you feel about it, David? Uh, I think, well, to be honest, it was really because we had really nothing to do, <laughs> and then we were just. We were looking for something to do and we were looking around um, in Kuching. Um, yeah. Here's another thing. We were looking at spaces that are right in the middle of the city, but <coughs> they are sort of like hidden gems. People don't actually know where they are, even though it's yeah. just right there. And we were, we were looking at um, sort of uh, looking at uh, Kenyan. Oh, yeah, that's Kenyan. That's, that's yeah. that. Uh, Mike will show you, so we have to show it to you eventually. Yeah. Um, and the other one that we will uh, still keeping under covers uh, until okay. next time. That one okay. is um, yeah. Actually, it is a uh, started from a very private project, and yeah, yeah, we brought yeah. it become a public project. And eventually, right. we pitched the idea to the city hall, the mayor. And he likes it, and then he. We also get the support of minister. Now it become our office project, and we're doing a, a urban regeneration. It, it's a program, so we just handle the two jobs. Yeah, so it's, it's a good topic. We, yeah. yeah, it's a good topic today because your topic is a big topic. There, no idea with a big question mark. But again, uh, all of you have proven that you have contributed something, especially for society within your architecture. Very well. So it's a promise, yeah, David. So, okay, Gagel, yeah? it's a promise, yeah. We're gonna call you for, for coming November. So now, architect Mike, um, I saw it's a few questions here. Yeah, maybe I shall begin with the question from Miss Angie Tam. What is your advice for aspiring architect? What? What is your advice for aspiring architect? She's, she's asking this. To aspiring architect. So what is your to advice? Be, to be an aspiring architect? Yeah. Yes. Dream a lot. <laughs> Dream a lot. Yes. I agree Dream. with you. Yes. Yeah. If Dream I can support. Of, yeah. Dream of Was anything. Correct. Dream of anything that you I agree with you, Mike, because uh, this is, I always uh, respond to all the students, uh, maybe to, to the client as well. All of our architects here, we are dream makers because we make people's dream come true. That's, that's uh, I can echo what Mike said, that just keep dreaming, big dream, okay? The next question is from Dini Haswani. Mike, are you ready, yeah? 
Hi, architect yeah. Mike Boon. A question for you now is a two question here. Question number one. From your personal view, what are the traits needed to be a great architect? I repeat. Yeah, to be a great architect, what are the yes. traits? I, I don't think, I never think of myself will be a great architect, so I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I never imagined to myself to be a star architect or, you know, like like, like Jaha Hadid, uh, yeah. Norman Foster. I never, I just want to do what I like to do and exactly. what is relevant to me. And to the society and community who who gave me and I, what I received from them to contribute back to them, really. And this is yeah. from Bhushan. It's very Buddhist in thinking, but uh, but but I tell you, I don't want to die. I don't want to die like a Buddhist. I, I don't want to die as like a Christian because at least the thing they don't burn joystick. I got allergy. <laughs> I mean to support your answer uh, to Dini Hazwani um, is about passion. Yeah, it's passionate. So it's it's not it's not to find out you to be great architect or just to be a good architect. My personal view to support uh, Mike's is just be a healthy and happy architects. Second question from Dini Hazwani as well. I understand that to be an architect, not only to have creativity skills, but also as a problem solving skills, as a problem solver. Do you mind sharing the tips on how you always be a mind sharp type of an architect? Wow. A mind oh, sharp wow. of architect. Mm. Uh, when I dream, I'm almost in a sleeping state most of the time. Right? I don't know how sharp. I, I, I don't think I'm that sharp. And I don't think I'm creative at all because I dream all the time. But mm. I think the other part of it, uh, what was it? See, I can't remember. I'm dreaming. Problem <laughs> solving. Mm. Because, uh, like, I say I have no idea in this talk. I really start with no idea. I really have no idea. So when someone asks me to do something, I always start with no idea. But if you have already have an idea before someone asks you to do something, it's very dangerous. Yeah, yeah. That becomes very egotistic. It's about yourself, not who you want, not the person or the society, uh, whoever who need your help to realize the dream. It's about you, not them. So as an architect, it should be them, not us. So yeah, yeah. we think of our skill, how we train and experience and travel, and use mm -hmm. those experiences to help to solve problem, to put jigsaw puzzle together for other people to serve their needs. I think that's important. Right, right. I can see from the screen here a lot of uh, students and viewers. They they say that a very great great touch from architect mind. And they, they're very inspiring. They love your design modular idea. And they said, now they start to say that, wow, we need to become an architect to contribute back to society. You see, with the topic of no idea, giving an idea for all of us tonight. Well, yeah, okay, actually, maybe I, uh, huh, sorry, say again. Say again. Can I have a quick, quick, quick word for students because they are still students? Yeah. I, 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 I think as a student, you're going to education system. There's no good system, system, right? But there are systems are more open. There are more, uh, you know, there's some systems are more open. I just had a conversation with uh, a good friend of mine, a lecturer, uh, Chi Kiong from uh, UCSI. Yeah, and and he uh, interests me because uh, a lot of the studio work and the teaching work are directly related to a specific community or a site a real site, and the students' work that they're doing, either in recording or in writings or writing a thesis, uh, contribute, will contribute to that site. Eventually, mm. the, there's a connection between university and the, the society and the new community. Mm. Well, whatever they're doing is not just theoretical or for academic reasons. So whatever academic actually are contributing positively to society eventually, right? So, so, so it's outreaching. So I, 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 I really admire and respect them for having the heart of think 
of ways of doing uh, education in a different way. Mm-hmm. It's not a free promotion, but I think it's not an advertisement for, for them. But, but mm-hmm. this is how I felt for students. Because uh, I've seen a lot of uh, uh, exhibitions and competitions. It, it, it upsets me when I look at buildings like objects propped in the middle. And then, mm-hmm. and then when you look at the presentation, they started with site analysis, contact analysis, etc. But when they design, those are just tick the boxes to get marks from the lecturers so that they can move on and do whatever they want. It's totally irrelevant. Right? <laughs> so that's, that, that is my, my, my observation. Uh, yeah. Good, good. I'm sorry, Mike. The next question is not for you. So you oh. can be excused. Because <laughs> David got secret, David got secret admirer here. So the question <laughs> is to David. <laughs> okay, David, get ready here. The question now. What are uh, from Alice Lim? Okay. What do you um what do you think about architecture education you had being a recent recent graduate? Okay, recent graduate, and if it prepare you for the actual practice, uh, discounting the fact that your father is an architect. So, what is your advice to other students? Uh, first thing is, if your father is an architect, it makes life so much harder for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, and worse is living so with your father. Us, okay, why why is it harder? <laughs> So I see my boss every day, 24-7. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, your father answer for you. I want you to answer it. Okay. Yes, David. The question was, what was, what was my opinion on uh, yeah. architecture? Your advice. Your advice. Oh, okay. Um, I think... I think um, <laughs> From my personal experience, it's more about looking at more than what this field is um, sort of about. So looking at at the bigger scope of what we as architects, I suppose, can do because um, our society is changing. Um, We have so many more new buildings that we might not even be able to have it and it's also getting more and more expensive to build um so maybe we should be looking at something else um we were when i was doing my final year in university um so i started in tasmania it's a small island um in australia so what we did was uh, we did an um what's it called We, we did a sort of uh urban catalyst study um, to look at how we could sort of um, because okay the state that I was in was a it's a university state so basically it's the university there's only one university in the whole state Um, small so we were looking at how we could sort of bring the bring the city and the university closer to merge it together um, and how that will help to generate sort of more jobs and um, we look at the entire city planning. So we were looking away from designing individual buildings and sort of like niche or unique houses for people, but we're looking at um, city planning and um, space regeneration and how to use, um, that, that was a term, um, it's called um, urban guerrilla. So sort of... Um, it's a very alternative approach in treating spaces. So there were movements like um, no car day yeah. or um, sort of uh, rent, rent, rent a park or something like that. So mm-hmm. it's looking at more than what um, we currently think architects are doing. So yeah. maybe you could say we are... <laughs> leaning away from sort of traditional architecture um, okay. but on looking at um, how else what else can we do as architects because um, I don't think the profession can sustain by just doing commercial work over and yeah. over because if everybody is doing commercial work 
um, and not everybody can afford sort of new houses or sort of buildings. Um, who are you designing for and what is going to happen to those things that you just built? All right, all right. Indeed, indeed. Thank you, David. I think it is a well explained that. Maybe I, I can, maybe a, just a quick one for Girl Girl. She, she became a, a, the most youngest professional architects. You just passed your part three, I think last year or last year, I can't remember. I'm getting old now. So how you face as a young professional architect, especially at this uh, situation, the, the, the recent situation, you as a, a professional architect, you're working with uh, architect Mike, I and mean, then maybe a piece of advice for the, all the, the students here? Um, I think one of the advice is to know where are your goals and what you're pursuing. And mm -hmm. achieve your, your goals and, and what you want. So just be clear and know what you want to do in, um, in, in your goals. And you can you are open up to all the different ways and all the different methods of achieving that. Yeah. Mm. Thank you. Can, can, Thank I, you. Right. can I make a little correction, Adrianta? You can. Sure. Now, both of them are not working for me anymore. They are my Tauke and Tauke Neo. Oh, <laughs> so now you're working with them? Yeah, no, <clears throat> because uh, I don't believe in master and servant relationship anymore. I but see. mentoring, yes. So so okay. all of them are directors of my company. We transfer share to them because mm. now, uh, Lambaga allowed thirty percent share to be owned by non architect. Correct. So all of them are shareholders. So we're all equal. <laughs> we all have to take very low salary because we've got no no much income. Right, right. Okay, coming and back is, to you, boy. Huh? Sorry. Say again. Finish your words. Yeah, I, 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 I think now we prefer to stay small. Then we don't don't have kind of pressure to think about uh, the. <laughs> the salary and the next payment when we're going to get and <laughs> I agree with you I agree with you so okay coming back to you Mike yeah, because there's a question from Fabian's a bit yeah Fabian's hello architect Mike Boone how do you define a good design especially for students like us when they want to start designing a building so any advice from you is this what, what's his name again Fabian's Fabian what? Fabian Abit. Not very familiar. It's, I think it's one of the, the interns from the office, right? Oh, really? Okay. I'm going to knock his head when I see him next time. He's okay. been in my office for months and he doesn't know what to do. And I'm wasting my time. Okay. Maybe you can share to all the students with, the, with this question. Yeah, you share this. I think the students have the same typical question from their head. Now I cannot remember the question after I got upset. <laughs> <laughs> no, how do you define a good design? Yeah, especially for students like all of us here, when they want to start designing a building, how to define as a good design? Any advice? When, when, when mo most people look at it and, and, and can say that um, it looks right. <laughs> yeah, it feels right, it looks right. I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Not until okay. I see one, I can tell you this is my opinion, good or bad. But it, right. I don't touch. I, I need to know. You know, uh, when you look at a, a design, you really have to know where is it coming from. Really understanding the uh, what you are doing and where yeah. you are coming from. And what are you doing it for? And who are you doing it for? So I, I have no answer because I I. I never satisfy my design. I always hope that, that my next project, my next design, I can do better. Yeah, do better and better. There's yeah, one question I, from Mohammed Oliver. Mike, <laughs> Mohammed Oliver and Sor. I'm not sure he's, he's from Sarawak or Malaysian. I'm not sure. But this question, uh, he's saying that uh, Mr. Mike, architect Mike, good sharing. Uh, knowing architect Mike as a humble architect, this is in my opinion, my experience, he said, Sometimes we tend to be proud with our works. There will be a pride. But how do you balance between pride and being humble? How you balance it? My God, that's the best compliment I've ever heard for a long, long time. I'm being humble. Okay. I just blew my talk with my client, especially 
the client is a local authority two days ago. I'm not mm -hmm. humble. You know, <laughs> you, huh? you always low profile, will, okay. But I will not be humble when I have a license not to be humble. Mm -hmm. So, so, so uh, life is a balancing act. I don't know. I really don't know a lot of answer, uh, uh, answer, but I it's it's a struggle for me to be nice to people. I see. So you have no idea actually. I really have no idea. <laughs> so when, come, when there's a particular situation come, then maybe I can react to it. But you ask me question uh, to give an answer, I really don't know. But honestly, don't know. <laughs> so so. Uh, don't get disappointed because uh, I'm not that charming most of the time, you know, when I'm at work. <laughs> yeah, David. yeah, I mean, when, when you yeah, come to you work, you're very serious. Yeah, very serious. Okay. <laughs> but again, I mean, a lot of people observe this. A lot of people observe sometimes. I mean, personally to tell you that, you know, it's not about to be humble or to be, you know, low, but... Uh, we we architect we represent society we we make a space for them we make a shelter for them we make a a, a city for them you know we creating uh, you know as a dream makers we make society dreams come true so I mean that that this architect's all about but maybe different opinions of different people you know but again thank you so much architect Mike yeah uh, such a lovely evening. That even though you're in Kuching, I'm still in KL now. We are kind of far away. I've been to your house before. Uh, maybe a, just a quick one. Just flip through to your 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 PC or your notebook to, to showcase your your spaces. If any I'm students, uh, just a few couple minutes. Just a few couple minutes. Maybe uh, students, if you if you have any chance after MCU after pandemic, you go to Kuching. Just give a call. For architect Mike to come and visit his house because I've been to the house before. It's, it's a very uh, symbolic of the space, actually. Uh, the way he designed the space integrated with nature, uh, I can tell you, is a, is a kind of an experience. Yeah, they were. Well, so wanna, this uh, is. Uh, right, right. But, okay. But it's the business now. Mm -hmm. um, let, let me do this. Ah, First, okay. I show you the toilet. Okay. My favorite space. Where is it? Okay, you turn on the light. That is the right. living space. The room I mm -hmm. was sitting there. Yeah. So maybe I would turn on the light and the carrot later on. So let's yeah. talk about the toilet. Mm. Oh, you want to begin with toilet first, all right. So the toilet under the stair. Mm. It's a toilet that has no windows. It only has two slits on both sides. So this is a cooler space. Yeah. In the whole house. So mm -hmm. when I come in, I play while I'm cool it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, That's so beautiful. Now, I can see that the, 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 the way you play lighting is there. And I, yeah. Okay. So so what mm -hmm. I do, maybe I'll open the window. Yeah. So everything is real, yeah. But you don't feel that you're being catched in, right? So maybe I take you out to the terrace. Am I yeah. walking too fast? No, no, it's okay. Yeah, we feel we feel you now. It's like a virtual reality. It's a tour. <laughs> you see my 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 the, the woman's in my life. Hi, Che Che. How are you? <laughs> okay. So way to lie down and doze off. Right, right. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so let's go outside. Right. Open. So so that's kitchen there, Mike. Sorry. That's kitchen. I can see the kitchen there. Um. Yeah. We, we don't do spaces. Actually, this is a counter. Okay. We, Multi-purpose counter. The uh, we do our work. You see, my computer is still there. Uh, right. they, oh, okay, okay. Doing the homework, we make pizza, mm. and uh, when we have yeah. friends, the girls around here. So this is the most used spot in the in the house. So yeah. you're looking back. Hmm. That's where you know far end. Yeah. That's yeah. where I, I was sitting just now. Right. So. So um, kind, kind of open space. Yeah. You you went. You get through the uh, natural ventilation 
from side by side, yeah, Mike, yeah? I can see that. Yes, I, we don't use aircon a lot. And at yeah, night, yeah. uh, it, sometimes we have to use uh, we have to use blanket. It's getting cold. I, I right. there's another so so that is a space. So yeah. it's raining now. You can see, you can hear the rain. Yep, yep. Oh, it's raining there. Oh, yeah. All right. There's a pond. Okay. Yeah. So I used I used to to sit down there before. <laughs> yes. All right. So from inside. Actually, this door I can open fully. It's a 12 meters uh, opening. You mm -hmm. go to the deck. You're looking yeah. at the entrance. Yeah. And the pond that we cross with a bridge. Yeah. Into an outdoor space, outdoor room. Wow. Okay. This this is a uh, this is where I sit. And I'm dying to have this. <laughs> Okay, Mike. <laughs> okay. Next to a statue of Buddha, which I'm not a Buddhist, by the way, I have to declare. <laughs> okay. So the, 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 the grill can be open fully. When you right. look up from the garden, it's mm -hmm. like a state. But it's dark yeah. out there. You can't see much, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. You have a, your big lawn there, big garden there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you're looking at, at the house. Yes, yes. I think, I think, yeah. So I have Wonderful. to turn my camera back now. Wonderful. Wonderful. I think, I think this, tonight is a, such a special online series because, uh, as you know, all the students, such a good topic. No idea from architect Mike Boone. And okay. we, we have a special guest behind this as well. That and then nice. we have a virtual reality tour to one of the architect's house. Yeah, architect Mike Boone's house in Kuching. So if anybody from Semenanjo, you've got the time to go to Kuching after all this pandemic, yeah, uh, do do visit uh, Architects Mike Spoon if he allow you guys, yeah, do keep in touch with them. Right, <laughs> Architect Mike. So any last word from you, Mike? From a, I'm, not end our session today? I'm not going to to give my eulogy, so I don't have my last. <laughs> Uh, okay, maybe yeah. a, a piece of advice to the students. I, I really enjoy the session. So, so yeah. And I, I have no pressure because I didn't prepare for my talk very much. I just put the slide together. And right. I have to read it 50 slides before we start this talk, you see. <laughs> but I, I, hopefully I manage my time still okay. So yeah. maybe yeah. next time, the opportunity, I would more than happy to share. Thank you so much, Architect Mike. Yes. Thank you so yes. much. Yes. For your time. Thank you. Right, Hang on, right. I have to do this. I have to do this. What's right. That? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> love. I don't know how to do it. Yeah, love. <laughs> the answer to it. Well, okay. Students, viewers, thank you so much, Architect Mike. Such an eye opening, very interesting, and rich sharing. I hope all of you enjoy it and gain a lot of information and knowledge. So until then, hope to see you the next session. I pass the floor to our MC tonight, Zenwi. Cheers. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Architect Adrianta. And also thank you, Architect Mike, for that uh, very interesting, very eye-opening uh, sharing from you. And also the motivations and advices, uh, especially for the students and young architects. So this marks the end of our talk today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us on today's online sharing session. Thank you so much to our special guest, architect Mike Boone, for sharing his idea with us. Uh, we hope everyone enjoyed it and gained a lot from him. Also, a very big thank you to architect Adrianta for being the moderator. And last but not least, I would like to thank Pam and Archidex for giving us the opportunity to have this collaboration in Archidex Online 2020. Stay tuned for the next webinar on the 17th of October. 11 a.m. as we will be having Mr. Kevin Lowe with his topic, Indoctrination. I believe it will be a very interesting session and we hope to see you all there. Do keep in touch and follow us on Masa's Instagram and Facebook for more updates. And do check out Architects Online for more interesting webinar sessions. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll catch you next time. Have a good day and bye-bye. Good night. Be safe, everybody. Bye.